So, um, welcome to my office, <laughs> where it really counts. When does it really count? Okay, I have the, uh, the article I titled, You Don't Count, to be, uh, I guess, provocative. Because it's, Makum, Makum Aaron, Enemy Namida. The place of the Aaron didn't take up any space. So I wrote, it, I wrote about that. I've been speaking about that. Today I'm going to be like cheap out and just read my editorial. I don't know if it's a, if it's a um, medium that's worthwhile or not just to read something. I usually use you before it's done to sort of get it good, but I don't know. Today everything's unusual. I was up at four in the morning. I just, you know, you, you want to say slick us early, right? <laughs> I did it. I really did it this morning. You did it. You, I really did it. When, when I blow the shafer, he says, my, my friend comes up and he says, I blow the shafer for the community, right? One, one, a few times. He says, you really blew it. <laughs> it depends how you say something. You really blew it. You did it. Or you really blew it. Man, you blew it. Because <laughs> some people, you get a lot of people poo-pooing your um, blazen of the shafer, your blast of the shafer, if you don't do it right. Everybody like looks askance and well, what kind of horrific thing did you do? The word a whole year depends on that. And so I've had experiences that way. People that was there and then you, you can't communicate that because you gotta use sign language and Mosaf when you're when you're blowing the shafar or even even when you're doing the the Miyusha, the, the first blast of the shafar. No one can talk. So what are they gonna do? Technically, you're allowed to talk about things that you're occupied with. Even if you said a blessing on it, it's still carried through. But when you're in the middle of musaf and you're in the middle of davening, you can't tell the guy, you didn't blow it right. So you get all this, I've been there, I've done that, right? I've had, as a novice, blowing the shafar, but I was given the task. And people, I, I thought it was good, but some guy there didn't, didn't like it. And he was trying to do all kinds of hand motions. I didn't know what he was talking about. But apparently he thought that if the sound goes, vacillates, it's not considered as if you count the time for when you start blowing the shafar, which is, I think he's completely wrong. I mean, I don't know where he got that from. He says all sounds that come out of the shafar are counted. But maybe he was talking about a hither, like a special way to do it. <laughs> it was a mess. And I was like left breathless, literally, because... <laughs> I had not practiced it. We, we don't actually, our, our custom is, I don't know what I do to these days, but in those days I wasn't eating anything or drinking anything before blowing the shafar to show the beauty of the mitzvah. That you, you know, mo, there's a few mitzvahs like that. I think the lulav, we don't eat or drink before shaking the lulav in the morning, blowing the shafar. Anyways, you don't count. I heard that as a child, men the foot of fast was playful and exuberant. He used to enjoy jumping from the back of one wagon to another as it would pass from the opposite direction. Concerned about the child's reckless behavior, an elder chassid reprimanded him, telling him that even if he is wagon-hopping savvy, he shouldn't use up his merit in gaining protection from above to save him. Similarly, Yaakovina says, Katainti mikolach sodim. I am unworthy of all the kindness you have steadfastly shown your servant. In standing up to Esau, Yaakov was concerned that his merit had diminished from all the kindness he had received from God in Haran. That's rational. During the Yami Noroi, in the days of awe, we face judgment to determine all the material livelihood we shall merit throughout the entire year. This idea comes into play in the following law regarding expenditures for meals on Shabbos and Yom Tov. It is praiseworthy to lavishly buy and prepare Many fine foods for Shabbos, provided one has the means. Even if one is short of funds, having only possessions, he should use them as collateral to borrow money. God will surely provide him with the ability to pay it back. In this vein, our sages taught. God said, lend to me and I will pay it off. Meaning that the expenditures of Shabbos and Yom Tov do not count towards the sum allotted to the person in Rosh Hashanah for his provisions throughout the year as well as his other needs. Thus the sages say that all of a man's needs and the, me the means to pay for his expenditures are allotted on Rosh Hashanah. In heaven it is determined how much he will earn that year to provide him with food, as well as the rest of his needs. For all the days of the year, 
Shabbos and Yom Tov, and Yom Tovim, however, are exceptions that are not included in, in this amount at all. Rather, if one increases his spending for Shabbos and Yom Tov, he is granted more funds to pay for it. That's the Shulchan Aruch of the Alter Rebbe, Laws of Shabbos 24, 242, Law 3. The Talmudic passage upon which this law is based reads, all a man's provisions are allotted for him from Rosh Hashanah until Yom Kippurim. Here, our sages outline the, the period of judgment, which is determined on Rosh Hashanah and finalized in Yom Kippur. Shabbos and Yom Tov are times when the money we spend doesn't count. These holy days do not detract from what is coming to us as our year's budget, thereby encouraging us to spend liberally and enjoy celebrating these holy days. Yom Kippur is when the Jewish people were given the second tablet bearing the Ten Commandments. The tablets were placed in the Aaron, the Holy Ark, in the Holy of Holies. Our sages teach that Makam Aaron Eina Minamida, the space the Aaron occupies does not count as part of the measure of the Holy of Holies. The Aaron did not occupy any space. Its measure did not count. That is, the Holy of Holies was 20 by 20 amas. Yet, if you measured from one wall of the Holy of Holies to the Aaron, you would get 10 amas, and another 10 amas from the other side of the Aaron to the opposite wall, indicating the Aaron took up no space. The funny thing is that the measurements of the Aaron are very precise, 1.5 by 2.5 by 1.5 amas, cubits. Yet it took up no space. Curiously, you would expect the Aaron, the centerpiece of the Holy Temple, to be the very measuring stick for all units to follow, yet its dimensions are un un unrounded half measures. If the Aaron did not have these exact dimensions, it would not be defined as an Aaron, and the mitzvah to build and place the Aaron in the Holy Temple would not be fulfilled. Clearly, the measure of the Aaron is something real, precise, and holy. So in what sense was it built to specific dimensions, yet it does not take up, up any space? When you consider the space of the Holy of, of Holies, a room that surrounds the Aaron, you can count from either side two full measures in round numbers of ten amas, signifying two whole but separate statures. The Aaron not taking up any space at all in the center. In this context, when the environment is considered where there is a room, a world, the Aaron is not a separate part of the equation. Makam Aaron Einaminamida. The Holy of Holies is thus a, a space that houses Kuchabrichu Shkinte, Anil Deidi Vadeidi Li, God and His Beloved. So it, it sort of indicates that the two ten Abba measures, that's like, it says Maishu Rabbeinu was ten Amas tall. It's pretty tall, it's like 15 feet tall. And I have a funny time, I have a hard time imagining that because the Mishkan was ten Amas tall. So if he wore a yarmulke, it would be like pushing up on the ceiling, which is made out of furs, like curtains. It would, <laughs> it would be, you'd see him like, if he stand on his tippy, stood on his tippy toes, it would push up through that. I mean, that doesn't, I, I don't know how to understand that. But the idea of a perfect person is ta ten Amas, because Maishu Rabbeinu was perfect. So here you have these two ta ten Amas, measurements on either side of the Aaron, with the Aaron in the space, even though it took up 2.5 amas, it was facing widthwise as you walked in. Unlike people misunderstand this. So, but that two and a half amas didn't take up any space. And it's interesting that it's like precise in a half measures. Like, why do you have like the meter is like uh, made out of um, platinum and it's in what, what, London somewhere? like in a sealed bulletproof case, the, the unit of measurement. If you're going to make it, the unit of measurement should be the Aaron, and let not, it doesn't have to be two and a half Amas, make it one Amas, and call it the Amas, that space of two and a half Amas. If that should be the center, that's the whole, most important object in the world. It houses the, the Luchos, the second tablets, right? So the Aaron not taking many space in the center. In this context, when the environment considered, when there is a room, a world, the Aaron is not a separate part of the equation. The Holy of Holies is thus a space that houses Kuchabriko Shkinta, Anil Deidi Li, God and His Beloved. So we have these two sides that we forget about the iron for a second. That doesn't take up any space. When we talk about the iron, it's a different thing, as we'll see. But when speaking of the iron itself, the mitzvah to form its shape, when you have to make it, you have to build the iron. When the iron is the focus without considering the room, the world surrounding it, then its measurements are precise and real. Considered as an artifact unto itself, the Aaron is designed to house the holy tablets, a marriage contract between God and the Jewish people. The Aaron is the place that embodies our seamless unity with God in a boundless, infinite way, where the Jewish people and God are entirely one. Then the space of the Aaron, albeit finite, 
does not count as part of the measure in the sense that it cannot be counted. It is truly an infinite and eternal unity beyond measure. May we all merit to be written and sealed for a year of boundless abundance with a true and complete redemption now.